Hello, it's the middle of May and what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start putting in my brassicas and my leeks and my um, exhibition onions. They've all been growing really, really well in the greenhouse, but now the temperature is much warmer and they'll be absolutely fine outside. There is still a very small risk that we may well still get a frost, but these guys will be all right because they don't mind it if it gets a little bit chilly at night. My tender crops like my beans and my tomatoes and my cucurbit, so my courgettes and stuff like that, they're not going out yet until the beginning of June. So let me just show you, it's actually quite uncomfortable down here, let me see if I can sit up there, that's better. Let me just show you how they're getting on. These are my exhibition onions, they've been growing really well. If you do find that some of the leaves go a little bit brown, it doesn't matter, just uh, take them off. They've been growing really well. I've got three trays of those to put in. I have got all of my all of my brassicas in, apart from my cauliflowers. So I've got my uh, Brussels sprouts, kale, sprouting broccoli and cabbages and all those other things in. They're over in the cage over there, but I'm gonna put my cauliflowers in the same cage that I've got my leeks and my onions. So these are doing really well. They're nice oh, and tall, so which is brilliant. So as soon as they hit about six inches tall and you've got the two baby leaves and then you've got about three or four other leaves, then they'll be ready to go outside. So that's those. And then, oops, here are my leeks. They're doing really well and they're ready to go outside. So I will show you the brassicas, the cauliflowers first. Whatever brassicas you have, plant them out in exactly the same way. Doesn't matter whether it's kale, whether it's cauliflower, whether it's Brussels sprouts, brew kale, whatever, they all need to be planted out in exactly the same way. So first of all, I'll start with my cauliflowers and then I will move on to my onions and my leeks. I've got this bed already. I went over this yesterday and I took any weeds out. And there's always a few that you miss every time. The chickens have been in here, so there's corn in here. So I've got little bits of bits of corn that keep popping up there so just go along and just weed it make sure that it's all okay level it out look there's more and then you'll be ready to plant I expect I'll be faffing around with all these little bits for quite some time now when you put your brassicas in I tend to space them about the length of my trowel, which is four, eight, about nine inches apart. If you want to do them a little bit further apart, then do. But I find nine inches is absolutely fine. So even the rows plant those nine inches apart from each other. So you need to dig a nice deep hole. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> left my tea inside <clears throat> if you find any it's this blooming bindweed which just drives me up the wall there we are so a nice deep hole and support your the stem of your plant between two fingers turn it upside down squeeze the pot hopefully it should come out very well now let's see Hopefully you can see it's a really nice root system in there. Now when we put this in the soil, we want to put it in, the, we want to bury these two little baby leaves and we kind of want to put all of that into the soil. So the first true leaf, where that meets the stem, that will be just above the soil. Everything else below that will be under the soil. That way it will become nice and sturdy because, okay, cauliflowers don't grow particularly tall, but your brassica, your um, um, Brussels sprouts will do, and it just gives them an extra little bit of support. 
so don't worry about planting them in deep so a nice deep hole pop it in and then fill in all the way around with the soil and then give it a nice firm push in and then we'll do the next one sorry the chickens are complaining because I'm in their cage so lay the trowel down and go okay that's about right that's how I do it anyway and again a nice deep hole support the plant and in it goes and I will carry on doing all of these and then when I come to do the next row again I will do the same thing I will put the trowel down and then I will plant the next one here so that will give them plenty of room to spread if you do want to give them a little bit more room then do so that's the cauliflowers as I say if you've got any other brassicas then do them exactly the same way so now let's move on to the onions so I will finish off doing the cauliflowers in a bit but I want to show you the onions first now I'm going to leave between my last row of cauliflowers and my first row of onions I'm going to leave the length of my trowel and again exactly the same as I did with the brassicas I will dig a nice deep hole like this now you want this hole to be the depth of the pot okay so because you want to put the onion in at the height that it is in the pot so that's the right height so you need to support the plant between two fingers turn it upside down squeeze the pot off and oops oh, this is not very easy you know there oh dear getting too old for this there are the roots loads and loads of roots there they're doing really well you can actually feel that they're actually really quite firm if you squeeze them they're really quite firm so let me go back excuse my bottom so I will then put the onion in the hole just like that and then I will just fill the soil in around them now I won't space these the length of the entire trowel what I will do is I will position them most probably about five inches apart from each other which actually is from which is the this section here now I'll put that down there and it's got to be about here now so that I'll do that for the all the way down the row and then again when I do the second row I will again do them that distance apart if you want to do them a little bit further then by all means please feel free to but you've just got to remember that how wide they'll get and then just give it an extra little bit of space in between so that's those that's two of those in so I will just start the next row so it will be about there these have been I sowed these from seed in I think it was January of this year so they've been growing really well now just be aware that at this time of year in the greenhouse it gets incredibly hot so keep an eye on everything that's in the greenhouse and make sure that you water it really well because it will sort of plants can go via through lack of water very 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 quickly okay let's just put one more in I will once I've done this one I will then carry on doing the rest but I will then show you the leeks 
So that's two, the start of two rows and I will carry on doing the rest of the leeks until I have finished but let's move on to the leeks. So I've got all of my cauliflowers and all of my onions in. What I'm going to do over this side and gradually work towards the, uh, the onions is I'm going to put my leeks. Now leeks you don't plant them like you do the rest of everything. You don't dig a hole and then put them in. Let me show you how you do that. Now, first of all, clear the area, make sure there's no weeds, no big stones. And if like this bed here, it was incredibly dry, what I would suggest you do is to give it a really good water, let that water soak down, and then you'll be able to do the next stage. Now, what you need to do when you plant leeks, just turn the soil over, level it across and then you need to make a hole but not a hole with this side a hole with this side now usually i use a broom handle so you need something that's about the diameter of a broom handle which is about an inch and a half to two inches i can't get that in the cage so that's why i'm using the handle of my trowel so push it down position it and push it down to hopefully the entire length of the trowel. If you can't, then as far as you can. Thing is, if your soil is dry, then you can't make a hole because as soon as you take this out, everything will fall back. So this is why the soil needs to be slightly damp. That's as far as I can get it down. Now I've got a hole there. And what I need to do is, I'll take that one, is you need to Take this out of the pot, so hold it between two fingers, turn it upside down, take the pot off, and then you've got to shake all of the compost off. And all you're going to be left with is the leek and its roots. So you're not wasting this compost, you're actually putting it straight back on the bed. So let me show you. Oh, sorry. That's what you should end up with, okay? As a lovely set of roots in there. And all we need to do is we just need to drop it very carefully, all its roots first, obviously. You might have to encourage it just into that hole. Now I know that sounds really, really weird, but that's what you do. Once you've then planted them all, then you will fill up this hole with water. If some of the soil falls in, don't worry about it. But this is why it needs to be damp, because then actually that hole can stay there. And the, uh, the leek, as it grows, it will swell up and it will fill up that hole. Now you need to plant these about, I don't know, four inches apart from each other. So I'm going to do it the length of the handle, which will be about there. Then I will make another hole. There we go. And then I will put another leak in, empty it out, shake all the compost off, and just drop it in the hole, just like that. Just, oh, I think I need to take a bit more off. Let's take a little bit more off. There we go. Oh, look, there's a bit of compost that's got stuck in the hole now. And like that. Okay, now you will most probably, I will definitely need to do more than one row. So I will put the rows, again, the length of the handle apart from each other. And I will carry on doing that. I've only wetted, um, damped down the soil on a little section that I was going to show you. So I will plant what I can, then I will make the rest of the soil really wet and then do the rest. So that is now all my brassicas and my exhibition onions and my leeks are now in. The garden is filling up really quite nicely. What I will now start to do is I've got some flowers that can start to go out now. Just check if the flowers, if you're growing any flowers and they say <clears throat> um, that do not put out until frost has gone in your area, wait. But I've put some nasturtiums, I've dotted them about. 
<coughs> excuse me, because they'll attract the bees and other pollinators and they look really, really nice anyway. It's nice to have those dotted about. So that's those. And what I will now start to do once I've cleared out a load of space is I will start to sort out the tomatoes and the chilies and the aubergines and put those in their final pots. But I will show you that next time because it will be the 1st of June and I've got a few weeks to be able to start doing a load of that stuff. So there's lots of sorting out to do. Now somebody did ask me, when do I start feeding my plants and what do I feed them? I feed my plants seaweed fertilizer. I don't start feeding them until the flowers start to come out. If you start to feed them before the flowers start to come out, so this will include any fruits or vegetables that you have, if you start to feed them too early, then all you will get is just a load of leaves. You want to wait until the flower starts to develop. Whether you want to wait until it starts to open, you don't have to, but once that flower, you can see the flower, if it's just about to open, then, then you can start feeding because then all the energy will go straight to the flower and therefore straight to the fruit. So that's what I do. If you do something different and it works for you, then fine. Now what I will do before, once I've got all of those bits in, is I will give everything a thorough water. It's incredibly hot today. It's 27, 28 degrees today. I'm in my shorts, it's very scary. Um, so <clears throat> everything really seems to suffer a little bit in this heat because it's not used to it. The best time to water is later in the evening if you can because then that way the water will go down into the soil, it won't evaporate off and it's got plenty of time, it's got all night to go straight down into the roots of the plant exactly where it needs it. So if you can water last thing at night then please try and do that. The um, best thing to do, I tend to use a hose which has a direct spurt straight to exactly where it's going. I don't use one of these because you end up getting water where you don't want to get water. If it's easier for you, then do, but they seem to waste a huge amount of water, those oscillating ones but if that's all you can do then then fine but that's what I do. I've also started to save the bath water and I've also taken the outlet pipe out of the washing machine and I've put it in a 72 litre bucket which is just big enough for a load of washing. Every washing machine is different so yours may take less water or more water but that water, that's grey water, and that is going on the plants, and they seem quite happy. So uh, that's how everything is getting on at the moment. Next time I see you, beginning of June, there will be so much going on. Everything that hasn't gone out so far can go out, for me anyway, and there's lots and lots of reshuffling to do in the greenhouse. So I look forward to seeing you there.